world, I'm Josh. And I'm Lauren. And welcome back to another episode of Let's Try Stuff. Coffee edition. Long time no see, everybody. We're not dead. I'm still very fat and Lauren's still very skinny. Uh, just honestly, uh, kind of just got busy and a little bored. But uh, we're still drinking coffee, still trying different uh, alcohols. And today we are going to try from Equator Coffees the Ethiopia Sedama Arti. That's the bag. Um, I believe we've had Equator Coffee though before, although it looks a lot like the Ritual coffee bags as well. At this point, it's getting hard to remember. Oh, we're also trying out Lauren's new camera, mm -hmm. the uh, Sony ZV-1, I believe it is. And we don't have the zoom recorder for the microphone, just trying out the onboard microphone. Yeah. Got a better tripod now, too. So, Christmas, good to Lauren. And yeah. Good to herself, too. Uh, they got tasting notes on here. It's a single origin, vanilla, lavender, and sweet lemon. But they don't mention the processing method or um, any height that it was grown at, anything like that. Roasted on 12.4, it's 12.28. Um, so not way out of line considering it's us. Mm -hmm. Got this from Trade Coffee. Um, smells natural processed. Brewed in our Breville Perfect Brew, Brewer, whatever it's called. Don't know, the beans look Pretty small and uh, pretty lightly roasted. Don't know if you can see them there. They suggest that the perfect cup of coffee is two tablespoons of ground coffee, six ounces of water, uh, brewed at 204 degrees within two weeks of opening. So we're outside of that. We probably used more coffee than they suggest because we do 90 grams to, I can't see, it's probably 32 ounces, maybe, no, maybe more. I don't know. Whatever the Breville thing does. Before you talk about how those tasted, I'll just run through some we've had recently. This is by no means all of them, but... Fingerprints, Farmer and Roaster, the Batak Sumatra from Highwire Coffee Roasters. I'm not entirely sure which is which, but um, my recollection is didn't smell that like much of anything and was relatively unremarkable, just fine. Uh, Red Bay Coffee, King's Prize, Ethiopia, Yirgacheff, um, Pretty typical there, nothing to write home about. This one was really good. The Methodical Coffee Ethiopia Durferes, a uh, natural processed coffee. That one was a, a big winner for the year. Uh, Red Rooster Coffee El Salvador Las Margarita, uh, washed processed uh, Pacarama varietal. To be perfectly honest, don't remember much about that one, so probably mostly unremarkable. Uh, Kirin Yaga K2 from Novo Coffee, a washed process uh, out of uh, Kirin Yaga County, Kenya. Um, doesn't stick out very much either, just kind of run of the mill good coffee. Uh, Roosevelt Coffee Roasters, we got this on a trip uh, to the middle of Ohio, yellow honey processed, um, Franklinton, Ohio, it's a Kateshi estate from Zambia, I remember that's why we picked it up, because you don't see Zambian coffee very often, and I do vaguely recall that being pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, Love Your Parks from Stone Creek Coffee. Uh, that is from Stone Creek in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It was a bag that they donated $2 from every package to their Milwaukee Parks Foundation. 
That was from Lauren's friend, Alexander. Shout out to Al. Thank, Thank you. you. Al. Uh, I don't remember it being particularly uh, noteworthy, just good coffee, but it was cool to get the gift and to have somebody support their parks on our behalf. I just messaged her and told her she should buy it for herself, but <laughs> she sent us two bags, so pretty awesome. Uh, when I say a coffee was unremarkable, it's still way better than like 90% or more of the coffees out there. I just mean when you've had as much third wave coffee as we have, you sort of know what the baseline is and it's sort of just... The bar gets raised. <laughs> yeah. But Stone Creek is one of those uh, roasters that never makes a bad coffee. No. You're going to get a really solid one no matter what. Very cool coffee shop. Two of those bags, actually. Uh, Panther Coffee, Israel Salazar from Colombia. I don't remember caring too much for this one. And another Colombian coffee from Anodyne, also out of Milwaukee. Colombia La Pradera from the Santander region. Uh, several different varieties. Castillo, Colombia. Katuara, Tabi, and Tivica. Um, also, don't really recall. Bag's kind of messy. Don't recall anything about that really standing out. So, Lauren, I'm going to put these away and you talk about this coffee. So, I am a big fan. This is really smooth coffee. It's really kind of, it's... I'd say it's more fruit than nut. I'm I'm really having a hard time coming up with really much to say about it because it's just really a nice smooth coffee. It really has that tea quality to it that you get with some of those really excellent African, Ethiopian specifically coffees. It's definitely natural processed, maybe honey, but it smells natural processed, the beans. The coffee itself has sort of a creamy smell. I see what they're getting at with vanilla. I think that's more in the nose. Um, I get pretty, more of the lavender. I, I have a hard time placing lavender anyway, because I don't think of that as a food. You know, that's yeah. more of a like. But I get what you're saying. Um, taste, definitely taste that natural processed blueberry. Extremely smooth coffee. No, um, no bitterness to it, no harshness anywhere. Um, you know we're biased towards natural processed coffees and I think you could tell that by all the coffees I said didn't really stick out to me. Um, by that tea-like quality I think you're referring to, it's not, um, it's not that full-bodied. Yeah. It's kind of really thin feeling. Um, hard to say, but doesn't strike me as being super heavy caffeine. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it doesn't smell great when it brews. It, when it brews, the air smells a little bit like fruity doo-doo. <laughs> like, like what I imagine a, uh, what do they call those cat things? Civets? Civets. Smell like a civet farm a smell. Because it's kind of how it smells when it brews. So that might be off-putting enough for most people. Um, this is a B Corporation. I do not know where the equator is from. Uh, plant-based bag, roasting since 1995, either from San Rafael, California, and it's equatorcoffees.com. Um, as far as trade is concerned, pretty good. Um, they keep their packaging to a minimum, which I didn't think I would like, but it, it seems fine. Hi, Myrtle. 
<laughs> Myrtle wants to be part of the show. Claro is more shy. But um, anything that I said stick oh. out to you? Well, Myrtle and I agree that this is an excellent coffee, and I would absolutely get it again. Yeah, totally. Um, big fan. Doesn't beat out methodical for the coffees I've had in 2020. Definitely doesn't beat out the Eugenie Ides, which I believe we had in 2020 from uh, Paradise Roasters. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the video quality is good. We did not shoot in 4K, although we did get a new computer. That was part of the reason we weren't making videos either. My laptop was just seen the end of its lifespan and made editing really painful. We'll try to do some liquor. We've got a huge stash of bottles with like, uh, you know, one tea. drink left in them that may not make for the best reviews. I think I like trade coffee. I wouldn't say I like it any better than Misto Box or Crema. It's just good for mixing up which ones, which roasters we were getting. Um, what else is there in case we forget to do a video for a while? We're going to try to be better. We're going to try. Yeah. Um, we might mix it up a little. I know this has become a coffee reaction channel. Um, but uh, we might throw in a little woodworking along the way. That's always sort of been in the background. We've also flirted with starting another channel. Um, check out... Lexi and Hunter Pence's coffee, um, Pineapple Labs, we uh, watch their channel all the time, and they, uh, we sent them a Christmas gift that hopefully they'll see, and um, that we made with our woodworking abilities, or lack thereof. Anything else? I think that's it. Oh, we did get the OXO. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know how you pronounce that, but that kitchen brand, OXO, OXO, their, um, their cold brew maker, we got that for Christmas, so yeah. we'll probably give that a whirl as it warms up. I'm sure we'll try it once or twice before then, too. I mean, I'm a crazy person and will drink iced coffee no matter what in the middle of winter. Iced coffee is just my thing, so. I like to ice my leftovers. If, if I wake up the next day, especially... On a, week, on a work day and there's still enough left over to just pour a mug I like to just ice it because it tastes a little better that way but yeah uh, heading into 2021 probably try to undo all this weight gain at least a little bit um, try to do some more woodworking try to be better about videos COVID hopefully will be wrapping up and then, well, not wrapping up, but hopefully the vaccine will be widespread enough that Lauren can get back to traveling and singing again. I miss my singing buddies. She's been doing mostly virtual concerts, and uh, I'm sure she's anxious to get back out there. Even though I'm just really glad that I was able to have the opportunity to do any music at all while everything's shut down. It's been great, been treated really well, but I am ready to get back in person. So, fingers crossed. Oh yeah, mugs, gift uh, from another co-worker. I'm a lawyer, my level of sarcasm depends on your level of stupidity. And that is the mug from Lexi and Hunter's coffee. I think it was when they put out the drip. We got the mug too because I think all the proceeds from that went toward COVID relief in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Well, before Myrtle, stop. Myrtle tips <laughs> Myrtle. over Josh's glass of water, we should probably sign off. Yep. So thanks for watching. Tell us what to try next. Or don't. <laughs> Leave a comment, subscribe, or don't. <laughs> See you next time, hopefully sooner than uh, the most last most. <laughs>
recent last time next time <laughs> <laughs> bye <laughs>